revenue hand over fist because people are turning to natural health products. You know, and one of the m- biggest campaigners for this is a guy called Dr. Rath, and he's uh, produced this pocket-sized book called uh, Roadmap to Health. And Dr. Rath's claim to fame, and he's a hero in South Africa, because this guy realised that the pharmaceutical companies were making money hand over fist out of AIDS. And so he did his own research, and what he discovered was that actually, if you don't give drugs to people who are HIV positive, but you treat them with natural remedies, you, you, know, you get them to uh, change their diet, and you get them to use herbal remedies, they, they don't actually develop AIDS. It's only when you start giving them the ARVs, the anti-retroviral, anti-retrovirals, uh, that's it, that they turn into um, AIDS victims. He's written this amazing book called End AIDS here. And of course, funnily enough, Dr. Rath is not exactly flavour of the day with the pharmaceutical companies because they've lost a massive revenue stream from uh, South Africa. This was from the Times a few weeks ago, and when you see it, you think, oh, this is, you know, this is great. Look at that. You know, alternative therapies getting a great write-up. 80% of the world's population rely on herbal medicine. 191 million is spent on complementary treatments in Britain every year. 60% of Scottish doctors prescribe homeopathic or herbal remedies, etc., etc. But, actually, that wasn't quite the balanced report that it seems. Because that piece of information was buried in this article with a headline that said, High Street Herbalists Can Offer No Evidence That Their Remedies Work. So which piece of that article do you think registered on the vast majority of the population? And look at this over here. Expert backs prescription by clinicians. This is the biggest threat to the vast majority of complementary health practitioners. Because part of the quest of the pharmaceutical companies is literally to shut out all non-medically qualified practitioners. So if, you're a, if you've qualified as a doctor first and then gone on to alternative therapies, then at least for the time being, with the uh, current plan of the codex, you would still be able to prescribe medicines. And now this is the case in Germany right now. You know, homeopathic medicines are available, but only when prescribed by a clinician. In 2005, the Alliance for Natural Health launched um, a campaign in the European courts to try and prevent Codex being implemented. And the judge was very sympathetic, because the judge, who was an EU Advocate General, he referred to the Arbitrary Powers of Codex supporting EU legislation as being about as transparent as a black box. And basically he was saying, and this is April 2005, no way, Codex, you know, take it away, it's not coming into the EU because, you know, we don't know what it's all about. But Codex, or the World Trade Organization, decided that um, they would launch a case in the International Court of Justice in Luxembourg. And that case came to court in July, on July the 12th, 2005. Now there's a film, which I have some copies uh, with me today, it's called We Become Silent. And this is a film that was made, it's a short film, it's about 35 minutes. It was made immediately after that European court ruling, but before the international court ruling. And in that film, what it tries to show is how the US was able to resist the implementation of Codex in 1994, and try and, if you like, get some enthusiasm for people to resist in the EU. But on July the 12th, The International Court of Justice overruled the EU. July 12th ruling of the International Court of Justice in Luxembourg followed the July 4th Rome meeting of Codex when the 85 countries present ratified the restrictive guidelines for dietary supplements. Canada and the USA amongst them. Objections from China and South Africa were ignored. Just as in the original 2001 version, the current guidelines of the EU directive, listen to this, strictly prohibit information about diseases being treatable by nutrients. Strictly prohibit. It is fundamentally illegal for a doctor to advise a patient that their condition may improve if they change their diet. This is outrageous. This is the players. This is Dr. Rolf Klaus. Gross Klaus, big Klaus. 
He's the chairman of the uh, natalie named uh, Codex uh, Committee on Nutrition and Foods for Special Dietary Uses. Rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? And this is the team that's fighting them. It's the international non-government organisation under the guise of the um, National Health Federation. And these are the three players, key players. Scott Tips, who's the president of the NHF. And if you go to the website of the NHF, it's thenhf.com, you can find this book. It's called Codex Alimentarius, Global Food Imperialism. It's hot off the press. It's written by, or it's compiled by Scott Tips. And basically, it's a sum, summary of articles by people who have first-hand experience of dealing with the Codex Alimentarius Commission. And when, I mean, you can tell by the title, Global Food Imperialism, that um, Scott does not pull any punches. The other people on his team, the key players, Paul Anthony Taylor, who lives in the northeast of this country. He's the chairman of the National Health Federation. And Dr. Robert Verkirk. Now, this guy is extremely important, Dr. Robert Verkirk. Because he realised what was uh, occurring back in 2002. He was um, um, a professor at um, uh, Imperial College in London. And he decided to leave academia and take up the fight against Codex Alimentarius. So he is the scientific advisor. He's the chief executive of the Alliance for Natural Health. And he's the scientific advisor to the National Health Federation. So these are the three guys, the only three guys basically between our alternative community here and Codex Alimentarius. The National um, Health Federation is funded effectively from within the US. Paul Anthony Taylor is also the external relations director with the Dr. Rath Foundation, so he's financed by the Dr. Rath Foundation. But Dr. Robert Verkirk is basically self-funded. He's totally reliant on donations. And when I first contacted him and told him that I was planning on doing a, you know, a couple of talks on Codex Alimentarius, he said, uh, where are you calling me from, Ian? So I said, well, South Devon. He said, so you're in the UK? And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, and you're going to do some talks on Codex? I said, yeah. He said, good luck. Good luck. Then he went on to tell me, he said, you know, when I do talks on Codex in New Zealand or Australia or in the US, I can fill a small stadium. He said, when I do talks in the UK, I'm lucky if I get half a dozen people show up. Well, when we gave this talk in Tonnes a few weeks ago, I think we had like 30 people. And I don't know what we got tonight, maybe 60 or 70 or whatever. But you know, even despite the efforts that we've made in publicising, and we haven't pulled the punches this time, we've been pretty much direct in what Codex Alimentarius is all about, and yet we still get people saying, oh, that's not going to happen. The Alliance for Natural Health, I have no connection with them, by the way. You know, I have no tie with them other than I've had a, a number of phone calls with uh, Robert Verkirk. I've met him a couple of times, a lovely guy. I mean, he, but he, he talks out, you know, on, he's a scientist. And I'm sitting listening to him and I'm thinking, you know, in a minute, Robert, you're going to say something I understand. <laughs> ah, there it is, got it, thank you. I mean, he's an amazing guy. His heart, he's out, I mean, this guy's so genuine, he's so committed. And he's so under-supported and undervalued. And, and then when I met him, I was just even more determined. I spoke to Simon. I said, you know, if we can't get Totnes to recognise what's coming down the line here, then, you know, what help, what hope is there, really, for the organic and complementary and alternative health community in the UK? If we can't get Totnes and Glastonbury to realise what's coming down the track, then, you know, with all due respect, what comes will be self-inflicted. And it really pains me to say that. Because it's unforgivable that, you know, with this amount of warning, if you like, that there's no attempt to resist it. Now, what there is, is at the back there are a number of these forms here which are standing order forms with direct payment to the Alliance for Natural Health. And if you're a therapist in the uh, complementary alternative health arena, or if you're in any way involved in natural health food stores, or in organic farming, then I would implore you, excuse me, I would implore you to take one of these forms and give some consideration to supporting Dr. Robert Verkirk in his work.